a quick question. How many of you watch television? Hands up, please. I think probably, you know, let, okay, so some of you. All right, I'm guessing a significant fraction of uh, those of you who do take advantage in one form or another of the systems that our next speaker builds. Uh, I'm gonna welcome in a moment Keith Davidson. He's director of group TV distribution platforms at Sky Group. Uh, this includes live streaming, uh, video on demand, a bunch of analytics things, a lot of exciting things. And when you build systems, you build things on Kafka at that scale, uh, there's a lot that those teams learn, a lot of specifics, right? A lot of, of, of you know, Neha was talking about what it's like to, to, to build a cloud service at scale. And when you build things out of Kafka, large things out of Kafka, you learn a lot of details. Well, Keith's gonna take a slightly different approach. He's gonna talk about uh, how this effort has transformed the organization. So, Keith, welcome. Good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here in a community of uh, developers, engineers, and technologists. So, I want to take this opportunity to discuss what I think is probably one of the hardest problems we have in engineering. Now, you may think that um, when I started out, the hardest problem I thought I had was trying to fit my control system for a telephone exchange into 4K of memory. Now, that might give you a sort of idea of how old I actually am. Um, or it may be that you're trying to define consciousness within software, AI systems. Yes, these are hard problems. However, I think actually the hardest problem is how you develop a culture and facilitate developing that culture to solve those problems. That's actually probably the hardest problem from my point of view. So it's a non-technical problem. You guys will be talking about lots of technical issues, technical problems, how to solve them through the day. So we're going to go through a non-technical one. And it is how Kafka as one of the tools we use, has helped us through that journey. So, when we look at culture, and we look at how we develop our products, how we develop them so we can delight our customers, in Sky's case, it's how we, how we get content to the customers in the way that they can access it and see it, and effectively have the content they love to see, seamlessly, easily. So, to develop a culture, what do you need? Well, first of all, let's define the problem. Because what is culture? Culture is a set of norms. It's a set of values which you share within a group of people, and you repeat, as I've sort of said. We are what we repeatedly do. So how do we actually you need to be able to repeat the things, make them habit. This may sound familiar. It's like agile development. You repeat, you repeat, it becomes part of what you do. But also, there's another aspect. When you look at uh, the cultures, they are affected by the tools you adopt. And as you shape the tools you use, it will impact dramatically what you produce. If you think in the case of, go back in history again, Unix, Linux when they first started out, if it wasn't for the ability to pipe between commands, the, the way that system would have been developed, I would propose, would actually have been fundamentally different. You would have probably ended up with lots of monoliths. Yet, that simple function of being able to pass information from one command to another allowed developers to develop specific commands for specific purposes. So, again, power culture, from our perspective, is when we create the tools, those tools will shape us and affect our culture and affect the way we produce our services. So, why is this so important to us? Well, another aspect of it is that the culture you have within your organization, particularly your engineering culture, 
will come through in your product. So as it comes through in your product, it will, your customers will see it, they will experience it. Maybe not directly, but indirectly. So the scalability of your product, the engineering principles you have behind it, all the things which make it a value to them, they will see. And it will affect the value of your organization. So that's one part of the problem. You have to be able to establish a culture which is repeatable, a common set of values. You have to have tools that support that and actually feedback and allow it to continue. Now, one thing you have to be careful here, particularly around the tools, is we've all seen it in our industry where the tools take on the life of their own. It's all about the tool, and it almost becomes religious. I will use this. I will use this for the solution. One of the parts of our culture is also you always have to be able to challenge it also. And I'll talk through a little bit about how the introduction of Kafka was a challenge to a culture and modified what we actually did. So always be open to that challenge is also part of the way to build a successful culture and ultimately, I believe, successful products. So, a couple, couple of problems there to solve. Next problem is, as you scale, as you increase the culture and how you're trying to spread it across the organization, Conway's law comes in. Now, what this does is, and this comes back to how you organize yourself, reflects on your product. It will, your, your products and your designs, your architecture, will start reflecting the organizational patterns within your organization, and particularly around the way it communicates. So when you talk about things like how interfaces are defined, how contracts are defined between one service and another service, those will form around the organizational structure you have. It will start taking on that persona. Now, that may be OK. You organize through your, your architecture. Fantastic. So you organize your teams, you orientate them around your architecture. There is, however, one problem with that, in my experience. We are in an industry which is fundamentally about change. You could redefine our, our industry as change everything all the time. There's new technologies coming along, new features required. Customers, as they use your product, will evolve, and we will have to provide other features, functionality, other services to them. So suddenly, you start, be constra start becoming constrained, and your product very rapidly will stop developing because your, your organization is set around this way. So how do you overcome this? So that's the, to us, that's the problem. You need to build a culture. You need to be able to ingrain it within the organization. But you've also got to stop the organization from changing and uh, stopping constraining you from actually developing the solutions that your customers actually require. So, we believe that you have to hack Conway's law. So the way we do this, and the key to it, is communication. The way we believe you can overcome this is you abstract away the, the way in which this, the organization communicates and the way in which your systems communicate. By doing that, you free yourself from Conway's law. A lot of things have to come into play for that. But that's a fundamental thing. And Kafka is a tool we've used to free ourselves from that communication between services. So it abstracts it out, having a ubiquitous way to communicate events, data between services, allows us to take it up a level. We also do it in the organization. We actually have communications, a ubiquitous communication tools between people and teams. We actually use Slack, but that's another story. Um, so, by introducing this and abstracting ourselves up, we can now allow teams to develop microservices in, w in whichever way they, they wish, in the fashion they wish, and it's not constrained by the organizational boundaries, is what we believe. 
So, that's the problem set. Kafka is one of the tools we've used to break that problem set and allow us to go forward. So how did we do this? So it started with that one piece of culture, one team, where we started developing a solution, and Kafka was introduced into the organization. So this came about with one team looking at clickstream data from our website, sky.com. And it's only one team. So they were focused on one aspect, like looking at just one aspect of the human body. They were focused on that. They started developing, using it, and that, what actually happened was we said, you've got a problem. You can't look at the data holistically. We can't understand users' behavior. We have a lot of data, different systems spread across, different vendors, different solutions, no way to marry the information together. So they took this problem, we left it to the engineers, and they came up with a solution. It took them two weeks to implement Kafka, took the open source solution, put it in place, got it up and running in two weeks, proved the principle, which allowed us to remove all of the tools that had been overloaded onto the platform, and actually stream to an analytic system, which allowed us to connect information. That went into production, I think, roughly within one month from the initial idea that the engineer had. To this day, four years later, that system is still used within Sky, connecting all the websites together, collecting clickstream data and tagging information through a set of libraries which they produced, which have been reconsumed by multiple other teams onto devices, mobile devices, etc. And it still runs today and is still used. What it triggered within the culture was they took ownership of the problem, they took ownership of the data, and then, back to the thing about the tools influencing what you do, it started modifying their behaviors. It started modifying their business behavior, because suddenly this was available to them. They could actually look at it and come up with other ideas. And the system has just developed over the last few years and continuously built up to influence actually the way we organize our websites, influence the way we click data on the system, influence the way we analyze it in the background, and actually moving it towards real time. Now it actually is real time. So that's one team. Oh, before I move on, they also started internal open source. So it was the first library and project inside Sky that we open sourced internally for the community to build, for our community to build, which is one of our engineering principles as well, part of our culture. Internally, we, open, we effectively open source, share across all development teams, and allow them to contribute back. But as I mentioned, this is one team. The way you influence an organization, though, and a culture within an organization, is you have to be able to expand it beyond. You have to be able to take it to all the teams. Same as a community. The idea may start with a small group of people, but you need to be able to build a community around it. You need to be able to spread that culture and that knowledge. So how did we do this? Well, we look at it as basically creating an ecosystem. That team started off with a library. They started off with a particular way of doing it. They took hold of the problem, and they solved it, and then they shared that knowledge. Within Sky, one of our fundamental things is we are a DevOps culture. So this means you build it, you run it. All of my development teams are, on, are on operationally responsible for our systems because it builds certain behaviors. It builds, if you're going to be woken up at 3 o'clock in the morning, you're going to make sure that's going to work well. You're going to make sure the testing is done fully. You are going to make sure the monitoring is in place. You're going to make sure it auto-recovers and you don't even get the call. So we build this into our culture. However, one of our teams took this a step further, and it was actually a team which uses Kafka. Because of the nature of Kafka, 
distributing uh, data across the system, basically streaming data and events. Rather than I'm going to solve my problem and I'm done, they took it and said, when I face the issue, I'm going to fix it and I'm going to make it so I can share it. So they started building libraries, primitives, particular patterns about the way to consume Kafka and the way to use it within our systems. So they extended our DevOps culture, added to it. And this was a team that basically, they run our, we call it, refer to as content discovery. So when you go onto a Sky product and you see all the images and rails across the Sky product, whether on a mobile device or in your set-top box, those rails are driven by that team. Millions of customers needing individualized information and personalized information about what they wish to see. So, although they had a massive task to undertake, they had decided when they were doing it to make sure that they were all reusable and they could actually build upon that. And as well, sharing it internally, we have now actually started sharing it externally. These are reports which are available. They're nothing fantastic, but they are a base set of uh, primitives, as I said, and we'll continually build on them. We're going to release more, and we're going to add to it. Part of our culture is to share internally and also share back to the community. Mm -hmm. So we want to be in the communities. We use predominantly open source software within our entire organization. So we've gone from a small team incubating an idea, incubating a piece of technology, using it to pushing it out into an ecosystem and building on that culture, building on the principles that we hold true and the values we hold within the organization. So where do we go next? Well, our next stage is to industrialize this process. And this comes down to looking at those patterns, taking them, making them, expanding on them, making them reusable, as we said, by everyone, but constantly expanding on them. We as engineers, developers, work based on patterns. That's object-oriented design, the gang of four. It comes from patterns. We define a pattern which is reusable across multiple scenarios. So that's what we're aiming to do. Internally, I want to do this because it helps my teams not reinvent the wheel every single time. The other part about industrialization is we need to be able to make it scale. Because of the way we've grown up, which is great, what I've ended up with is I've got a Kafka cluster in digital web systems, Kafka cluster in my content discovery, and a Kafka cluster in my video platforms. Entirely separate. They communicate, but they're entirely separate. Run slightly differently. So we're looking to how do we Said that how do we approach this appropriately across the organization? And again, because I want that ubiquitous communication to free teams from being siloed and that impacting my product, what I want to be able to do is take it and say, how do I make it ubiquitous? How do I make this a common part of my entire platform and run it at the levels of reliability I require it to be? So that's where we're heading. The reason we go down this path is it's actually one of Sky's company mottos, which is believe in better. This is fantastic from an engineering point of view. It means we are encouraged to constantly push the boundaries, to constantly move forward. And the only way we can do that is by building a common culture, by building, building a way in which we approach the systems and a way in which it takes us away from our organiza organization affecting the way we, we work and affecting what our customers see. My job as a manager of development teams is effectively to influence this. It's to the teams and the community to develop it and to get it in place. But for me, I'm looking, I set the ethos and nudge and, and poke and prod people in this direction 
but it's fundamentally my development teams, my engineers, my principal engineers, my architects who drive this forward. And it has to be embedded within the organization. So Kafka is one of the core elements which has helped us move down this journey. There are other tools that have gone through the same journey. So we have done the same with Kubernetes. We contribute back to the Kubernetes open source. We've done the same with Cassandra. We've done the same with Couchbase. We work our way through in a very similar manner to all of these, and they become core to our systems and our services. And my, what we refer to as our core platform is built up of all these tools. However, we always go right back to the beginning and say, it's OK to challenge. The tool has to be fit for a purpose, has to meet what we need. So to us, the reason we concentrate on this, we, we ensure it's embedded within our organization, is because we have a lot of products that we have to support. And we have been very successful in doing so over the last four years. These are all the products which are my platform and the team, my team has successfully been able to develop against. These are all across Europe, so we deliver services right across Europe. We, are, we have over 200 linear channels, so this is your football event. Our systems have to be able to respond to millions of users coming on within a 15-minute time span and then disappearing an hour later or disappearing at half time and then coming back immediately. The system has to respond to that. We stream billions, hundreds of billions of minutes of content a year, and that's just increasing. Also, having that ability to build services is crucial to us, as I mentioned. I have over 500 unique services, each of them horizontally scalable within my architecture. If I didn't have a way to communicate between those, I would not be able to put this system in place. I then also, and another service which we've actually built in the same manner where we've taken open source and built and shared that across multiple teams, I deploy, this number's a little bit out of date actually, we deploy almost 10,000 times a year to our system. Continuous deploy continuous delivery. That rate of change is not going to go away. So having that commonality, having it built into your engineering culture is essential. On top of all of that, all that change which we have to go through, which meets the need, supplies the customer value, we also have to maintain a high availability. Our target is five nines which really means 100%. You don't get to fail. You don't get to allow the system to fall down. So again, it's another part which is built into all the engineering engineers. When an engineer is building a service, they build in the patterns to ensure that the service never goes down. Or if it does go down, that the customer never experiences it, never sees it. We also, as I mentioned, have to deal with millions of concurrent users. That football match scenario, or Game of Thrones. Don't know how many fans of Game of Thrones is in here. That is probably the most tense time within our organization. You don't get to miss it. The amount of bad press we get if we miss a beginning of a football match, or the first season of Game of Thrones, or the last episode, that's... You can imagine if it goes wrong, my phone is red hot. So all of that is built on that culture. We need to be there. And now, with that acquisition of Sky by Comcast last year, we are being asked to take this global. So our systems are being transplanted to the US. Luckily, we are cloud. We go multi-cloud, hybrid, and we can transport our systems, configure them, and set them up in the US. So we are starting to move global with all what we do. So how did Kafka ultimately, just to sum up, summarize out, how, how did Kafka help us? It helped us by, one, it reinforced that sense of ownership. 
which is crucial within our engineering culture. So we have, engineering teams have to feel they own the service, own what they're building. That is the only way they will, they will to build it for longevity, have pride in what they do. It also helps us foster a spirit of collaboration. So it allowed teams to collaborate internally, externally, and even out into the broader community. Also, it helped us reinforce that focus on data. Data, from an engineering point of view, is the lifeblood. Understanding what is going on with your systems, understanding the behaviors of your customers, the behaviors of the components within your system, every aspect will allow you, once you can analyze it, to determine where to go. Also, to develop that single ecosystem. And when I say single ecosystem, this isn't building a monolith. This is an ecosystem of tools that we can adapt, build, allow to evolve as we evolve our products, as we evolve our services, as we see improvements in the industry. But it needs to be an ecosystem. It can't be everyone doing exactly what they want in a different way, in a different fashion, over here, over here, over here. That's commonly known as chaos. So Kafka has helped us get to this point. I hope that actually gives you a little bit of insight into what we've done at Sky and how Kafka and this community has helped us. I'm very happy of the presented to you all, and I hope you got something out of this. Thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>